Hello everyone and welcome to Application Whitelisting in Action, How to Achieve Security, Compliance and Productivity. My name is Bob Carpenter and I'm a Sales Engineer here at Veronix. In this presentation, we're going to cover what the pervasive IT challenges are today with a particular focus on security, compliance and productivity. Then I'll delve into the concept of application whitelisting and introduce the Veronix anti-executable solution. I'm briefly going to explain how anti-executable and your familiar deep freeze, along with antivirus, fit into our layered security approach and finish up with some next steps for you. Let's begin. Educational institutions today are faced with ensuring tighter security for all their computers, not only in their labs but also on staff and teacher computers, where security might be compromised with the thousands of new malware payloads attacking computers via web downloads, email spear phishing, fake antivirus ads, etc. It is vital to protect student records and sensitive proprietary data against exposure to malicious tools such as keyloggers, zero-day attacks, and morphing viruses. Schools are also vulnerable to software licensing audits and need to ensure all their software is licensed appropriately and especially in the right quantity. All it takes is one disgruntled student or faculty member to pick up the phone and contact the Business Software Alliance. This will spark an audit. Although their allegations might be unfounded, such audits can be time-consuming and very costly. Finally, IT is struggling to do more with the same staff and reduce reliance on IT resources and in addition, the number of support tickets stemming from troubleshooting staff machines. As Deep Freeze users, you know how powerful it is for reducing support tickets in the lab. But what about all the staff computers without Deep Freeze? We've heard time and time again from our customers that teachers often cause more headache than the students since they contract malware, viruses, and can cause infections from their own web browsing plus often degrade computer performance due to downloads of unauthorized programs that hog the system. These are the biggest culprits for troubleshooting tickets on the staff computers. Despite the efforts of the computer security industry and a half-decade struggle by Microsoft to protect its Windows operating system, malicious software is spreading faster than ever. The aptly named malware surreptitiously takes over a PC, then uses that computer to spread more malware to other machines exponentially. Computer scientists and security researchers acknowledge that they cannot get ahead of the onslaught. AV Test reported 20 new million new samples of malware added to their collection. This graph shows the countless threats and with that, antivirus's difficulty in catching up with this growth. In the past, viruses and malware came about written by independent virus writers, or so-called nerds, looking for a challenge and notoriety. The undertone was not necessarily malicious, and these viruses were often just pranks. In the present, the situation is much, much different. Malware is now a tool for organized crime. Cyber criminals are doing it for financial gain, to steal and sell proprietary data, financial records, student records, etc. The tools are easy to obtain and malware is more malicious, detrimental and expensive than ever before. It is now more crucial than ever to protect your organization with layers of security. To protect your organization from more expenses associated with IT and capital purchases, the embarrassment of exposed student and staff records, stolen data and with that a tarnished reputation. These are recent media headlines. Malware attacks happen every day are increasing at an alarming rate and have no end in sight. Banking, the military, businesses, to say nothing of the unwary end user, all fall prey to malware on a regular basis. Creators of malicious software and botnet agents use a broad spectrum of tools and techniques to create one-of-a-kind packages. These packages can easily bypass traditional antivirus technologies. Armed with either the source code or a compiled version of their favorite malware, the cyber criminal can selectively apply manipulation techniques and technologies that radically alter the fabric of their malware. The result is a stealthy threat that evades signature-based detection systems, static analysis tools, behavior monitoring environments, and sandbox technologies. And yet, the malware retains the same core malicious functionality and remote control mechanisms. Attacks are becoming more and more targeted to specific organizations where the goal is to steal data and perhaps resell it. With targeted attacks, a unique malware may be designed specifically for the organization so no antivirus solution will have a signature for it and therefore render it useless in detecting it. 
Phishing is typically carried out by email or instant messaging and it often directs users to enter details at a fake website, whose look and feel are almost identical to the legitimate one. Phishing is an example of social engineering techniques used to fool users. With respect to compliance and copyright and licensing issues, many organizations feel that software audits rarely occur, if ever. The reality is that schools and colleges are often vulnerable to software license audits and lawsuits. The consequences for a failed audit are often in the tens of thousands to millions of dollars and perhaps even jail time. With respect to productivity, IT resources are always limited. Web applications, games, instant messaging, peer-to-peer -peer clients, social networking always consume massive amounts of bandwidth, memory, and processing power. These applications degrade system performance, pose security risks, and demand large IT resources. Schools have three alternatives. Work with unreliable computers and networks and increasing support costs. Invest money and increase bandwidth to support the business and gaming habits of users. Or do something to prevent these valuable resources from being wasted. If an IT staff was to place all hope in only one layer of technology, that company is bound to lose. Eventually, an attacker will compromise that one defense layer and then all is lost. In the early days of computer security, one would overhear, oh, we have a firewall, so we're protected. That was a short-sighted view that defends only against one type of threat. Those who failed to adapt and consider new attacks most often became victims. Now other layers are now needed, and sometimes one layer, such as desktop antivirus, is heavily promoted. IT departments are wise to revisit history, lest they repeat the same mistakes. The best practitioners use an entire arsenal of tools, each protecting a different area or, more likely, specifically designed to counter a specific threat. This gives two great advantages. More threats are protected against, and if one defense is compromised, a second or third or even fourth stands ready and must still be overcome. For example, a machine protected solely with deep freeze can temporarily and repetitively become infected, reboot the system and it's now clean, until some other computer reinfects it. This is where a preemptive layer such as antivirus or anti-executable or anti-executable combined with antivirus and deep freeze becomes a very well protected machine. Common layers include physical and environmental, social defenses which include written security policies and guidelines, network and edge protection, and desktop technologies we'll go over in a moment. When looking at desktop security, many things may be considered part of the security approach. Not all of them are as effective as we wish they were. System Restore When a computer becomes unusable, many administrators prefer to simply re-image than to try and troubleshoot and repair the damage. Many security experts say that if a computer has been compromised, the only secure choice is to completely erase, reformat, and reinstall the system. These drastic measures are not always feasible or necessary, particularly if the damage is not a security issue such as installing the wrong version of a driver. Note that system restore solutions do not prevent problems or mitigate the risk of data leakage. Rather, they provide a method, potentially a very effective method, of quick recovery. User account control. This layer is usually helpful to protect against internal threats such as malicious users. IT can also limit access to registry keys, admin tools, and removable drives to avoid data leakage and system degradation. Application whitelisting. Rather than try to identify all the possible bad applications that you never want to run, you start by identifying exactly what you do want to run. Therefore, the system is configured to allow only those specific applications to execute. The benefits of whitelisting are quick to see. You don't have to worry about unknown malware, because if it's not on the list, it simply doesn't run. You're dealing with a finite set of known good programs rather than the infinite set of unknown bad programs. Antivirus. Antivirus could be seen as an enhanced blacklist. Specific programs are blocked by name, by file hash, or because they contain predefined strings of known bytes and patterns. In most antivirus programs, heuristics are also used to attempt to detect variations of known viruses or behaviors that are virus-like. Antivirus is mandated in most organizations and is often required for regulatory compliance. Antivirus is often not all that effective when used alone. 
First of all, antivirus does need constant updating. The famous 10 immutable laws of security say that an out-of-date virus scanner is only marginally better than no virus scanner at all. Some antiviruses are very large drains on system resources. Now let's consider the layered security combination. The key limitation with antivirus is that it is only able to protect against the threats that the publisher already knew about, not the new one that's happening now. There are several types of threats that may attack before the antivirus vendors know about them. For example, some malware is specifically written to mutate, or to change its own code, to avoid detection. Other viruses exploit vulnerabilities that have not yet been disclosed or patched, known as a zero-day attack. And it is common for malware writers to reverse engineer a published patch to create yet another virus written in minutes after an operating system patch has been released, faster than that patch is applied and before the antivirus vendors can update their signature files. This is where application whitelisting is a fantastic complement to antivirus. By allowing only approved applications to install and run, all the new threats, zero-day and targeted attacks, plus morphing viruses, can be blocked along with any unwanted programs. Why application whitelisting is so powerful? The concept behind whitelisting. Only approved applications can install or ever execute. Unknown and unwanted executables are never allowed to run providing the benefit of having protection against zero-day threats, targeted attacks, and morphing viruses, protection against exposure to malware such as key loggers, and no dependency on definition updates. You're always up to date with the latest definitions. The benefits of application whitelisting go far beyond security, reducing help desk costs, preventing installation and execution of distractive or potentially destructive applications, Enforce written policies about unlicensed, illegal, or unauthorized application downloads to complement your efforts. Maximize your hardware lifespan to ensure that your networks are used for their intended purposes and ease software audit worries. So why choose anti-executable? It will reduce your IT costs associated with infections and troubleshooting time. Help you avoid costly IT audits and legal risks. Prevent loss and corruption of sensitive data prevent workstations from unknown future system vulnerabilities, and maximize your system performance. The capabilities of anti-executable make sure that only approved applications can install or execute, protects you against threats that bypass antivirus solutions such as zero-day, targeted, and morphing virus, protecting data from exposure to malware such as key loggers, Help maintain system integrity and performance by blocking installation of unauthorized or unwanted applications. Enforces license compliance by specifying programs and versions that are allowed to be installed. And is not dependent on constant signature updates. To bring the Ferronics vision of a layered security approach together, we have three layers to deter security threats and ensure the utmost protection of your workstations. The primary layer, antivirus blocking against known threats. The secondary layer, anti-executable, ensuring that the only programs that run in your environment are the ones that you deem worthy to be there. The tertiary layer, deep freeze, the reboot to restore solution, bring your machine back to its pristine state in case users do unauthorized system changes or anything else not stopped by the first two layers. The benefits of using the Pharonix layered security approach. At the center, we have the Ferronics Core, our enterprise management platform. Around this, we have our compliance, IT and business productivity, malware protection, and full system availability. Then we have the benefits outside of this, reducing support calls by up to 63% on average, preventing malware, prevent zero-day attacks, reduce time managing workstations, keeping your networks up and running, restoring the systems back to their pristine state on reboots, and making sure that unwanted applications never arrive in your environment. We're Ferronix. Our motto is we have intelligent solutions for absolute control. We've been in the software business since 1996. Since then, we've deployed over 8 million licenses of our products to over 30,000 customers in 150 countries worldwide. We have offices in the United States, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Ferronix is proud to have been carbon neutral since 2008. We have many industry affiliations, and we've won many industry awards. For more information, visit www.pharonix.com slash security. 
You may also contact Pharonix at sales at or phone us at 1 800 943 6422. This has been a presentation by Pharonix of application whitelisting in action, security, compliance, and productivity. Thank you for watching.